first sin is now and the hour of our death. for Mr. Waddington. Bunch of red raggers. Bolsheviks, a lot of them. I think they're going to intimidate me into breaking. But they won't win. You didn't mention the job involved breaching a picket line. And your aunt didn't mention that you were a commo. I've been told you dabble in sorting out delicate domestic matters. My daughter, Lila, she's missing and uh, I need you to find her and bring her back with as little fuss as possible. Do you think her disappearance could have something to do with your current troubles? Some kind of blackmail? Well, you think they kidnapped her for ransom? I like to entertain all possibilities. No, 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 they wouldn't dare. Lila ran off yesterday morning after a terrible row. And what was the argument about? My first wife passed away last year and things have not been cordial between my daughter and my new wife. I suspect the police might be better suited to finding her. Now, there's far too much about me in the press, Miss Fisher. I prefer to keep the police at arm's length. That's gunfire. What on earth have you been up to? All in the line of duty, Aunt Prudence. I 
was meeting your friend, Mr. Waddington, as it happens. Dabbling in his delicate domestic matter. There was a shooting at the docks. Connected to the strike? Impossible to say at this stage. It's time someone pulled those union hooligans into line. It's been a taxing evening, Aunt Prudence. Right now, all I have the stamina for is a hot bath and a stiff drink. So unless there's something desperately important... Jane is to be suspended from school. What's her crime? A whole catalogue of antisocial behaviours. She's been flippant, conniving, <sighs> uncouth. That's according to Miss Shepherd, the school's bursar, who was kind enough to forewarn me. There are reputations at stake here, Phryne. Yours, not the least of them. It may mean little to you, but I had to exert considerable influence on the board to get Jane into Warley Grammar. And now she's disgraced herself in her first term. I'll speak to Jane. We'll sort it out. I promise. Mr. Butler, you are an angel incarnate. Whose blood is it, miss? I don't know, Dot. He was young. goes on before 9 a.m. Nothing special on the agenda at school today, Jane? Aunt Prudence lagged, didn't she? Well, she gave me the official version. What's yours? You're sending me home with a letter today. Two of the girls stole Marjorie Johnson's shoes and glasses. She had to walk home barefoot and blind. So I slugged them. Sounds perfectly justified to me. You don't have to stay there, you know. But I like the books. The library is spectacular. Well, then, if you like the books and you're prepared to suffer the silly girls and senseless rules... A groveling apology. Exactly. Or hang the lot of them and we'll take our business elsewhere. So you go and get suspended, and I'll leave the decision up to you. The constable Collins telephoned. He's coming over to take your statement about last night. And um, Mr. Waddington's called twice. He said it's about his daughter. Thank you, Dot. Do you know Lala Waddington? Not very well. Why? Just curious. It's a very pretty cardigan you have on today, Dot. Thank you, Miss. And, uh... Do I smell attar of roses? It's a significant effort to impress a Protestant policeman. I wish you'd detect a little less every now and then, Miss. Yorker Rosen, 24 years old. 
according to his passport, but no address yet. Russian? Latvian. No other identifying evidence apart from a distinctive tattoo on his chest. The, uh, the letter A in a circle. What do you make of that? Well, he, he could have had a sweetheart whose name began with the letter A. Anna or uh, Amelia. Um, Arabella is a possibility. Um, Anastasia is, is another. I don't uh, think so, Constable. I suspect his heart was pledged to a cause called anarchy. Was he one of the strikers? Uh, no, sir. He, he never even worked at the docks. Any witnesses for the getaway car? Not yet, sir. They seem to have smashed through the gates up at the other end of the docks. How many shots were fired? Uh, three. Three shots were fired in total, sir. Two in the victim and one hit Miss Fisher's car when she was drawn outside by the gunfire. How very unlike her. <laughs> Interesting. Is this a match for the victims? Uh, uh, yes, sir. The victim was missing a, a, a black Oxford shoe. Is that blood? It's too red. It smells like paint. Zalga Paint and Solvent Company, Riga. You were right, sir. Mm. Give me a hand here, Constable. Same bullets like those before, sir. Browning automatic. American built, especially for the front. The idea was a man could march straight for enemy lines with this on his hip. Walking fire, they called it. Cut through a line of troops like a hot knife through lard. Walking fire. Make a note. But nothing seems to be missing from the crate. Looks like they were interrupted. Luckily. Oh, and did you make a note about leaving the scene of the crime in order to escort Miss Fisher home? She made a request, sir. Miss Fisher is going to make a good deal of requests, Constable. And while there may be circumstances in which we can be of mutual benefit to each other, we need to establish right up front who wears the trousers in this arrangement. Good morning, Inspector. Constable. What a pleasant surprise. I heard the first shot, so I ran outside just in time to hear the second shot and see two men drive away in a dark car. Did you get a good look at them? All I could see were the headlights, but they were speaking some kind of Slavic language. Latvian, probably. That would explain the anarchist tattoo. You can hardly blame the Latvians. The Russians, the Germans, the Russians again. Everyone's tried to get a piece of them. But why were they shooting at each other? We'll ask the questions. Thank you, Miss Fisher. Of course. What kind of evidence did you find at the docks? <clears throat> I'm just being polite. We've moved beyond manners, Miss Fisher. You were nearly shot because you're drawn to trouble like a moth to a flame. All good anarchists and wharfies would agree that capitalism exploits the common man. Do you think these Latvians have weighed in to give the union effort a bit more grunt? That could explain the Browning automatic. They have a machine gun. Idle speculation at this point. We discovered an attempted theft of ammunition, but no evidence of the actual weapon. Why on earth would anyone want to steal ammunition if they haven't got the gun? Thank you, Dot. It's a very pretty cardigan you have on today, Dot. Well, I think we've taken enough of your time. But you haven't tried Mr Butler's biscuits. Dot, why don't you take Constable Collins into the kitchen and package them up for him? It's 
my lucky day then. Hugh, I'd like your help with something. That young man handed it to me just before he died for a woman called Nina. I'll just get the inspector. I'd rather you didn't. It was entrusted to me. And I'm entrusting it to you. Me? The name of the jeweler is inside the lid. Why don't you find Nina first? And if you happen to unearth any vital clues along the way, then I'm happy for you to tell the inspector. But if you'd rather not. No. No. Uh, I want to. Of course you do. Anyone can see how keen you are. And it never hurts to impress the boss. I don't know how to thank you, Miss Fisher. Maybe you could just keep me informed? Biscuits. And you do know that it's an engagement ring, don't you? Of course. My daughter's room, Miss Fisher. How do you account for Lila's religious interest? My first wife was brought up in a very religious home. The more ill she became, the more devout she was for all the good it did her. And what was hanging here? A painting of the Virgin Mary. It was her mother's. Gerald, are you up here? Uh, my dear, my dear. This is Miss Fisher. She's the lady detective that I was telling you about. Oh, it's my fault completely. I hope who told you that. Only that you argued before Lila disappeared. Well, she was accusing her father of being unchristian towards his employees. And I tried to defend him, but it was clearly the straw that broke the camel's back. And when did you notice Lila was missing? At breakfast yesterday. She took her uniform and bag. No other clothes. Paul thought she might have gone off early to school. And who is Paul? Do you know where Lila might run to, Paul? Did your sister have any special friends? Or perhaps a male friend? A boyfriend? Paul. My sister went missing when we were children. And if there'd been anything I could have done to help find her, I would have done it. No person I wouldn't have upset. No rule I wouldn't have broken. Perhaps the Sisters of Mercy. She's gone there before. Why, in heaven's name, would she visit a convent rather than a church? Most likely she was interested in the life, miss. I'm sorry, Dot, but I cannot imagine a situation so intolerable. Lila would rather bury herself in a place like this. They're not... They're not buried, miss. They're married to God. Please, miss. There it is. How do you do? Miss Franny Fisher and my companion, Miss Williams. This is a most alarming business. Lila's brother believes she may have sought refuge here. Oh, I wish it were true. The poor girl's been in a terrible state since her mother passed. So you knew Lila well, then? She believes she has a calling. But such a commitment must be approached with a clear head. Were you aware of the friction between her and her stepmother? As I'm sure you can appreciate, there are some things in a family that are personal, Miss Fisher. I'm trying to find a missing child, Reverend Mother. When did Lila last visit you? Yesterday. She pleaded her case again to join the order. And what was your counsel? I advised her to obtain the permission of her family if she was determined to become a postulant. And then she left. 
And yet, she never arrived home again. I promise you I'm not hiding Lila between these walls, Miss Fisher. I got the distinct impression she was hiding something. You're not doubting the word of a reverend mother. Is that a first-class ticket to purgatory? What about fancying a Protestant? Any word on the dead man's next of kin? No family here, sir. They all seem to be in Latvia, but I am following up on the fiancé. What fiancé? Uh, this was handed at the docks. The... I followed it up in my break. Engagement ring? Exactly. So I traced the ring to the jewellers, and he confirmed that Yorker Rosen was actually paying the ring off in instalments. Uh, he gave me this address. Clyde Street, Collingwood. Have you been around there? Not yet, sir. Take the car and have a look. See if the neighbours know anything. But don't take any risks. Yes, sir. Oh, and well done, Collins. Thank you, sir. I found out about Layla Waddington for you. Before or after you were suspended? Doesn't start until next week. Most of the girls hate Layla because she's always scribbling in her diary. I hope that school library makes up for its students. Do you know anything about Lila's brother, Paul? He must be the one who picks her up on his bicycle. All the girls could goofy and call him the Sheik. Mm. Thank you, Jane. Well, Wally Grammar doesn't seem to be too impressed with my parenting skills, but at least I've exerted a good influence on your powers of observation. Excuse me, Constable Collins called to say that he's still trying to locate Yorka Rosen's fiance. But he has found out that her full name is Nina Alienna. Thank you, Dot. Constable Collins certainly knows how to deliver on his commitments. It's a fine quality in a man. Yes. Alienna. I wonder where you have to go in this town to find a Latvian anarchist. Our man says are okay, because he's still with the waterside workers, and I've been with the Commons since 1920. Now, what's your story? Marxist, Leninist, Communist, or Socialist? Well, I have a thorough working knowledge of revolutionary theory, and I'm happy to dispel any reformist delusions which bind workers to the chariot of capitalism. How's that? Your will do. Keep your head down. If you like the way it's attached to your shoulders. I think I'll fly solo for the rest of the evening. Sure that's a good idea? Easier to pass as a revolutionary without a posse of staff. Fair point. common name in Latvia. I don't live in Latvia. Shame. I was thinking of visiting. I could have used a guide. Why go to Latvia? To see Riga, to do some cross-country skiing. To find your Rosen's mother. And 
what would you be telling Yurika's mother? That he was not alone when he died. That he was courageous to the end. Do you know who shot him? Peter Smith. These are dangerous questions. My favorite kind. Perhaps Yorka Rosen's sweetheart Nina will be more willing to talk. Excuse me. What happened to Yorka? Can you suggest an escape route? Lost, are you? If we continue the struggle here, then others will follow, and this young country will be filled with old pain and grudges. And what about Yorka? He too had uh, started to question the methods of his comrades, and that is why he tried to destroy the ammunition. But his comrades caught him. What are they planning to do with the gun? Assuming they can arm it. Orders will come at the last minute. And Nina? Does she know that Yorka was shot by one of his own? Yeah, she may suspect, but if she starts to question their tactics, she is also in danger. She should be warned. I would not know where to find her. We used to be close. But things came between us. Is this man known to you, Miss Elena? Eureka. No, Yorker was an anarchist. And we suspect he was involved in planning an armed action of some sort. What do you know about that? I don't know. Someone murdered your fiance, Miss Eliana. We need your help to find out who. I don't understand. I heard you might require an interpreter. I haven't mastered all the Baltic states, but my Russian is passable, and given the current scale of Soviet dominion, I'm sure it will suffice. Unless, of course, you've got the case tied up already. Nina. How does Miss Fisher know we were here? I may have mentioned it to Miss Williams in passing. The morgue. Interesting small talk, Collins. It's 
Excuse me, Inspector. The station's on the phone for you. How did you know Yorka? Your English is very good. I only met him recently. I know that he loved you. Do you know who killed him, Nina? Not yet. But his comrades will make sure justice is done. There is talk that Yorka was having his doubts. That he was trying to stop his comrades going too far. Yorka was loyal to the cause. If Yorka's life was taken by his own comrades, then your life could be in danger too. Where do you get your information? There was a struggle between the Latvians and the security guards. Too many shots were fired and they had to flee without Yorka. There were no security guards. There were only three men. Jorka was killed by men driving a black car. Men speaking Latvian. I know because I held him as he died. I was there, Nina. No. I don't know you. I have to go. I'm a friend of Peter's. That's why I'm here. Peter is no friend to me. I thought we had a watch on these, Collins. We did, sir. But there was an explosion at the picket line and our officers had to help out there. Deliberate distraction, no doubt. I'd say so, sir. They came under the fence this time. Cut away the wire. Some very determined and now well-armed Latvians are running around out there, Collins, and I'd like to know who they have in their sights. did Nina seem? Like someone shot the man she was meant to spend the rest of her life with. Because of me. I am the one that told Yorka to go that night. I wanted to stop the bloodshed, but they've only added to it. I'm sorry. I have put you in danger. I should go. You're perfectly safe here. So much anger in that circle. And this one? A number of years in prison. And here? I was born free. And should remain free.
Miss Fisher. Hello, Jack. To what do I owe the honor? I need a serious word. <laughs> You all right? Do you know how much these stockings cost? Uh, you seem hell-bent on goading these lunatics into getting rid of you. I hate to be a pedant, but I think I just got in the way the first time. Well, and you've done nothing else to incite them since. I'm just lending you a helping hand. At this stage, the only benefit of your helping hand is that I might have a walk-up start when it comes to investigating your eventual murder. Your nudging along Constable Collins' fledgling career is another thing I can manage without. He seemed keen to take the initiative. Especially when someone hands it to him in a ring box. Until Yorker Rosen's murderers are apprehended, you are to lie low and stay right away from this investigation. Are we clear? As a bell. Don't worry, Jack. I have a delicate domestic matter to keep me occupied. Not sure I'll be able to save those stockings, miss. What happened to you? Too much champagne with lunch. Alice's diary. I beg your pardon? I popped back to school because I left my history books in my locker. And I found that in Lila's locker. Define found for me? Well, you can't really call what's on there a lock. You said you wanted to know about Lila, but I can always sneak it back. No. That won't be necessary. Thank you. I'll be upstairs doing my homework. Oh, and Jane, you're not to go out without one of us over the next few days. And all the doors and windows are to remain locked. Is that my punishment? No. It's to keep you safe. I know this love is wrong. Despite... Everything Paul says about love, conquering and all. The Madonna on my wall cried real tears today, and I'm so afraid. Is she weeping for my sins, or it's all in my mind? I'm going to confess all to the nuns and pray that they can save me. If Lila's unhappiness had more to do with an unnatural love between herself and her brother than a crisis of faith, then I hate to think what's happened to her. Oh, the poor thing. She asked to stay with us. But you didn't think it wise? She confided none of this to me. We discussed the nature of miracles. She became upset. I turned her away. Because there is something I think I should have told you, Miss Fisher. After Lila's first visit, her father wrote to me expressing his opposition to her joining the Order. As I've described, I had my own reservations about Lila beginning her novitiate. But her father's letter included a sizable donation to the convent. The building is falling down around our ears, and I was sorely tempted, but my conscience won't allow me to bank it. I'd appreciate it if you'd return it to the Warringtons for me. I'm curious. Was this miracle you discussed anything to do with the Madonna? Yes. Uh, Lila wanted to verify an apparition. She claimed that an icon of the Virgin and Child had begun to weep. I told her that the truth lay between God and her own heart. Lila and Paul. Well, of course, they're fond of each other, like siblings should be, but as to anything inappropriate. What about this? 
I know this love is wrong, despite everything Paul says about love conquering all. Another of her flights of fancy. Did she often make things up? Her mother didn't die of heart trouble, Miss Fisher. Not that anyone would say it aloud. The weakness was in her mind. She thought she was getting messages from God, signs. Lila saw her mother kill herself. Do you think that's why your husband was so determined to stop her entering the convent? He paid 500 pounds to make them turn her away. Well, I can understand, can't you, Miss Fisher? Religious fervor was such a destructive force in his first marriage. Where is that painting now? I had the staff get rid of it. It seemed the most appropriate thing to do. Paul, you're home early. Uh, come downstairs and I'll have the maid prepare something for you. Excuse me, Miss Fisher. I know where that painting is if you want it. Couldn't let them throw it out. I try to keep my faith, and of course I believe in miracles. But what if my mind is playing tricks on me? What if it's true? What I'm most afraid of? If I am imagining these tears, then I have no faith. But worse than that, I no longer know what is true and what I alone have dreamed up. Perhaps it is May Day time after all. May Day. May Day. What does that make you think? Labor Day celebrations. Maypole dancing. Or the aviation signal for distress. Not surprising the poor girl thought she was going mad. Someone's been tampering with this poor virgin. May Day. I think there's a May Day asylum in Beechworth. Mayday Hills Mental Asylum. Doctor, you're a genius. I hope you've got a compelling reason for me to justify police intervention. Unimaginably compelling. I'm not mad, am I? I don't want to go home. You don't have to, Lila. Not yet. And you're certainly not mad. We'll take good care of her. As long as you don't induct her while we're gone. the house where we saw Pete. You have taken her maids to Essie Garlic's idiots! How was I to know? Sassages! What are you doing? You won't hurt her. Just help me. What are you doing? Make sure of it. Pound <laughs> the ammunition to the car. I thought the gun was just to show strength, nothing more. <laughs> we are after gold, Nina. You think they will just hand it to us? 
No one wants the innocent to die. But the cause is greater than any one of us. Like Yorika? You lost this way, Nina. Don't you lose your way, too. Yorika was a traitor. Clean her up. We'll deal with her later. I have no key. I can't help you. But you can run. Where would I go? Go to Miss Briney. Tell her where I am, that I'm in danger. You are safe. Until three o'clock. Then what? It was me thereafter, not Dot. Bunch of spineless... Miss Nina Aliena. You were right. They killed Yorika. Where's Dot? She's being held at the safe house. I can take her there. Let's go. Wait. How do we know this isn't a setup? You're still a witness to the murder? Doc could be bait, and this Sheila's here to lead you to some deserted house so they can knock you off properly. A cheery thought. What say you, Nina? They wanted to kill you. Then they found out you were close to Peter. They decided to capture you instead and force him to accept their plans. What plans? They are going to rob a bank this afternoon of Russian gold. Ask Peter if you do not trust me. He will vouch for my word. I'm not sure some ex-anarchist's ex-love's word is worth that much. He's not an ex-love. He... He's my father. They will use your maid as a hostage. Where is the safe house? Clear it out. I told you, as soon as Nina ran, they would pack up and move to another safe house. We need Nina. We're taking her to the police. It is planned for three o'clock today at the State Bank. Which branch? Both bank and Maiznitsos yellow. Maiznitsos, you're sure? It is in Baker Street. Thank you for the tip off. But you stick as much as a fingernail into this robbery and I'll be the one hunting you down. Collins? Make sure Miss Eliana and Mr. Smith don't leave. We'll be asking them both a lot of questions. Yes, sir. Don't worry, Peter. If I never kiss and tell. You speak to me like a child. And whose fault is that? You left when I was three. When Mama took me Tell me again the address. Exactly what they said. Ghost banker, my iznitsas, yellow. My iznitsas? My iznitsas. My iznitsas. Again! I am sorry about the Yorker. About everything. He... He wanted to marry me. I know. Could it have been Baznitsas? Not Maiznitsas. It could have been Baznitsas. Not Maiznitsas. What does that mean? It means church. Is there a bank in Church Street? You... Has Jack left yet? Everything's under control, Miss Fisher. As, as we speak, Detective Robinson and seven of the station's finest are on their way. God, Hugh, there could have been a mistake. They might have gone to the wrong address. So we're just going to wait in place and pray that Jack gets here in time, right? Mm-hmm. You should stay in the car. You won't be safe. I'll be fine. I'll make sure of it. <sighs> Try and look natural. How? Fill out a deposit slip. I'll wait by the door. Hm. Everyone on the ground, move it now! Get down! Do as I say! <laughs>
Ay, 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 I have a comrade in Queensland. If you go to him, he'll look after you. And I will meet you there. Will you help her find him? Of course. How would you be free? Don't worry. I will find a way. What I don't understand is how you came to be in possession of an unregistered weapon, Constable. Uh, he wrestled the gunman and uh, turned the gun on his cohort. More initiative, Collins. I'm continually impressed. Well, go on then. Go and take your place in the sun. I'm not convinced my heroic constable deserves all the credit. But as I've forbidden him to do your bidding, I may need to escort you home myself. Thank you. Last week's history results came back yesterday. The principal ordered the board to re-enroll me because I'm too academically gifted to let the state school have me, she said. There you are. You've no idea how much trouble you've caused me, my girl. I've had to go to enormous lengths to smooth over your indiscretions with the board. I finally convinced them to offer you one more chance. But well, I... Wonderful news. We're so grateful that you could save the day. Aren't we? Thank you, Aunt Prudence. Yes. Well, well come along, dear Dottor. Ah, Dotty. <sighs> Peter got away. Please ask Mr. Butler to bring the car around. It's time to deal with those Waddingtons. Of course, I thought it was strange that a man like Gerald Waddington would make a donation in cash rather than by cheque. And that you were so unsurprised by it, Mrs. Waddington. What have you done? Your sister is safe, Paul. But there is no doubt she has suffered because of your deception. Hasn't she, Mrs. Waddington? It was the small things that gave away your love affair at first. The touch of her hand. But when Lila discovered you together and knew for certain, the only choice was to make her doubt herself. And what better way than to take her faith and turn it against her? No. A pity your glycerin left such a convenient trace. You made everyone believe what they feared most. That the madness of the mother had been visited on the child. And Lila had only one place left to run to. The same madhouse her mother was sent to. The Reverend Mother has agreed that Lila can stay at the convent. On the condition that she finish her schooling before she makes any decision about her calling. Thank you. I suppose you'll be wanting your fee. I'm not sure I need a monetary payment. But I could settle instead for peace talks on the waterfront. In return for my absolute discretion. You drive a hard bargain, Miss Fisher. You'd almost think someone twisted Waddington's arm. You know, charming, right? Mm. I've had my fair share of strike action. What, the police strike of 23? Mm. Shoulder to shoulder. A lot of good men lost their jobs. I was one of the lucky ones. I would have picked you as more of a fed sitter. It'd be a tactical error to think you had me pegged just yet, Miss Fisher. I'm very glad to hear it. 